instructors with the staff at the moment for 15 minutes, basically things we discussed, including the schedule which you'd like to talk about at the end of the day. And uh, we have uh, Mr. Kraske still on the stand. And Mr. Eckhorn, you may continue. Thank you. Good afternoon again. Um, I think the last thing we were talking about, at least that I was talking to you about, is uh, I think your maybe your um, observations or your impressions of Mr. Montana. Okay? Okay. That's why I want to refocus us anyways. All right. Um, did you have... Um, you said you didn't you didn't observe anything odd about his affect or anything like that. I think that was the last thing I was talking Correct. about. Correct. Okay. Um, did there... Uh, did anything occur, okay, in retrospect now, okay, um, that gave you any indication or gives you any indication that, that there was any sort of mental illness? No. Okay. So Mr. Uh, Montana didn't and act in a way at all that was consistent with someone that you would think would tell you? No, I don't think so. Okay. How about under the influence? I didn't see that. No, I'm asking. <coughs> did you say I didn't say that? I said you? I didn't see that. Okay. Um, so nothing he did gave you any sort of impression about um, whether or not he was intoxicated? Objection asked and answered. Oh, no. Okay. Did you see Mr. Montana take medications during your work, during his work with you? No. Now, you indicated that on one conversation you had with Mr. Montana on the phone, he said something to the effect of, your house is a dump. Was that on the phone? or? I believe so, yes. Okay. That took you by surprise, right? Yes. Okay, because not only is your house not a dump, okay, but it was odd coming from Mr. Montana. Um, I don't know if it was odd coming from him. Uh, I started seeing signs of a temper, and, and it, it took me by surprise. Okay, because you even you indicated that you had to say to him, hey, wait, I'm the client, I think you said, and, and you're the contractor, you know, I don't think you should be t talking to me this way. Right, something to that effect? Just something like right. that, yes. Uh, and I'm not trying to requote you, but roughly that's what you said, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, that you didn't feel like it was appropriate? For a, a client-contractor relationship, no. Certainly. And certainly it's not that you expected or, in your mind, deserved, right? To be someone to be talking to you rudely. It wasn't about what I deserved. It just was rude behavior. Okay. Well, to you it felt unwarranted. Right? There, this wasn't something spurred on by something that you said or did, right? I, I don't think so. Now, during that same conversation where um, Mr. Montana said something along the lines of your house is a dump, what else were you guys talking about? Um, remember? I, it was just about the money and uh, that the work was more than, okay. than he expected, so he wanted more money. It was, it was another conversation about wanting more money. Okay, and then it was just out of nowhere, he just says your house is a dump? Well, I, again, I, I'm not getting into his head, but it was a response to, um, it, it's more work, your house is a dump. Oh, okay. So to your mind, it was like a, an explanation on why he needed more money? Yeah, he was, he was basically saying it was more work than he anticipated. Now, um... At the time when you had this conversation um, about, and I'm going to fast forward a little bit from the dump one, okay, um, the conversation about where you perceived that he was quitting, and okay, um, at that point in time, 90% uh, of your stucco um, was uh, was painted, is that right? 90%? Yeah, 90% of your stucco, white color and white. I mean, no, I don't think so. Okay, and the eaves were done, uh, about 70% done. You know what I mean by eaves? Yes, I do. Okay. What are eaves? Uh, it, it, it's uh, the, the portion of where your roof line meets essentially with your with your stucco. Okay, so at that point in time, were uh, about 70% of the eaves done? I, I don't think so. I'm not sure where you're getting the, these numbers from. Oh, I'm just I'm asking you in your estimation. Uh, were, how much of the eaves painted? I, I didn't go around and, and do a, a whole evaluation of, of everything, but um, you know, like I said, I, I just started doing the work myself. Okay. Or do you remember having to do a lot of the eaves? Um, yeah, because I was up on a really high ladder, and it was kind of scary. <laughs> okay. So in your mind, you you painted more than 30% of the eaves? Well, technically no, because the entire back section of my house where the eaves are are not painted still. I couldn't reach them with my ladder, and 
one thing led to another, and obviously the event's getting shot in February and never got a chance to finish. So the entire back portion of my house, the eaves, are not completed. So that's 25% right there. And I painted the entire one side of them myself and another portion on the other side. So quite a bit more than 30%. Okay. And how about the stucco, too? Do you, can you kind of gauge that a little bit like you did the eaves just now, or not really? Um, not really, no. Okay. It's kind of hard to say. You had, you had um, talked about some receipts and things that you had bought at Home Depot. And yes. Did you have to buy a lot of paint? Um, I bought a... I don't know exactly how much paint I bought. Okay. Was that in the same purchases that we've already dis that Mrs. Ziff asked you about? And th those the I believe so. Yes. Okay. So those receipts would have covered all the paint that you. Well, I, I'm I'm not saying they were all paint. I'm saying there was some paint involved in there. Right. I was just asking. Did you have to, in addition to those receipts that were shown you, did you have to buy more paint somewhere else? I honestly don't remember that. Now, when you brought um, some of these uh, problems or issues to Mr. Montana's attention as far as um, some of the things that you perceived as uh, careless, okay, I think your work, uh, like the picture that was up there, um, probably, if I can, may I approach this exhibit? Sure. Okay. Let's say, let me refer you to People's Exhibit 18. You, you recognize that, or you've already testified about it. Yes, sir. Those are some steps that uh, presumably somewhere in your house? Uh, yeah, front, outside. front step. Okay. Yes. Um, now, um, you, you know, you brought that to Mike's attention, right? That there was some overspray? I don't know specifically if I brought this to his attention, but I did mention there was overspray. Okay. Um, now, let's talk about that one, actually. Um, on that particular photo that you're looking at, and I'm sorry, it's a, can you read the number? What's on the bottom there? Court, uh, D exhibit or courts exhibit? I can do it. It's 18. 18, sorry. I'm sorry, People's okay. Exhibit. Thank you, People's Exhibit 18. Um, those steps that are in the front of your house where there's the overspray, mm -hmm. um, those steps themselves are painted, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so that overspray from the white would be covered by the painting of those steps when, when that was done, right? If one were to paint those steps. Okay, they were painted before, right? I mean, meaning that they're not just concrete. Yeah, I, I, it's either a paint or a stain, a concrete paint or a concrete stain, yes. Okay, thank you. So that, um, that presumably that would have been corrected when the steps were done, right? If you needed to paint the steps. Okay. Um, and when you brought things like this to Mike's attention, um, he said, no problem, I'll fix those things, right? That was a, something he would say. Often. On a number of the things that were broken, he said he was going to fix them. Hey, okay, don't worry. Don't worry, Mr. Cressel. I'm going to fix it, right? I'm going to take care of that. Yes. Along those lines. Uh, at good times, yes. Okay. And in fact, he um, he agreed to, to paint your front door, too. Is that right? That was part of the original deal, yes. Oh, okay. Was that something that was contemplated in the contract or just something you talked about? Um, I, I don't remember specifically written word for word in the contract, but it's something that was, it was a, a topic we talked about. Quite a bit. Right. So you remember, that's uh, where I was getting, you remember having like a specific conversations with Mike about, hey, well, look, you know, my uh, my front door needs to be painted. And he's like, oh, no problem. I'll do that. I mean, because front doors necessarily aren't part of the stucco or the eaves and the traditional parts of the exterior. Of your house. That was understood as part of, part of the deal. He was going to do the door as well. And it was specifically discussed, right? Yes. Okay. And you were, you were not happy with the quality of painting he did on the front door, ultimately, right? Well, it, was, it wasn't nearly completed. Um, did you uh, recall that there was that there was any sort of particularities about the painting of the front door that were not to your liking? Not really. How about the doorknob? Was there something wrong with the doorknob or something? Uh, uh, the, the doorknob was, had paint sprayed on it. Okay. And that was one of these things that... Uh, I'm going to use the word bothersome. You tell me, because I feel like when I say bothersome, it's, you tell me. How did that make you feel? Let's put it that way. Normally, door, door handles, any kind of door handle, uh, is, is taped prior to any kind of painting. And there was no, no taping. So the white paint that had been sprayed uh, on the exterior of the home was, was all over the door handle. Another careless thing, right? In my mind, it, sh it should have been taped. 
And we brought that to Mike's attention. He said, you know, oh, don't worry, I'll, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to clean it up. I don't recall specifically if that was one of the things he said he would fix, but that was something he would say. Now, you had um, indicated um, that sometime you had described uh, Mr. Montana as hostile. And, uh, and I'm sorry, I, I'm not exactly sure when that was in your relationship, but do you remember where you were referring to when you said that um, Mr. Montana sometimes is hostile? Uh, on the telephone. Okay. And that um, when? This is like towards the end of your conversations or after you had believed you terminated your relationship? It was uh, middle and end, I would say. Again, this, this hostile person or the, the hostile tone that you encountered on the phone uh, seemed to be in stark contrast to that happy-go-lucky person that you originally hired. Is that fair? Um, I didn't really look at it that way. It, was, uh, in, it happened at times when, when he had not shown up. And if I would question it, he didn't. He didn't like, you know, asking. Well, you know, what happened today? Can you tell me what happened? Why aren't we doing work today? And he just uh, he he would get upset by that questioning. So I didn't look at it as it being different than the person that was with me uh, when he was there at the house. It's just that it was based on um, the the attitude at the time. So certainly different attitudes, at least you can say. Because he was, would, did not show up. I mean, when he was at, at the house, we didn't really have a, a poor interaction, I don't think. I don't remember one specifically that would cause him to be that way because he was working, and, and I, frankly, I wasn't there a lot. Let me ask you this. In your mind, um, can you make any sort of correlation between uh, anything you observed with Mr. Montana and his physicality during these times when you felt like he was um, angry or hostile and do you remember anything that correlated to it about his appearance? His appearance? I would explain that he, this happened usually when he was on the phone. Okay, well, on the times that it didn't, okay, when you're physically interacting with him, did, was there any sort of change in his physical uh, appearance that you could Again, tell? Uh, um, the times that he was at the house and we had uh, interaction, I, I don't, didn't remember seeing specifically uh, a lot of anger. Now, when you... Um, when you received messages from Mr. Montana. Uh, they seemed to be pretty long and drawn out, and, uh, unusually long. Is that fair to say? Um, I don't know if they were, the messages were long, but he, he would leave a number of, of voicemail messages. Okay, about the same, with, with the same content? Uh, similar. I think he was just trying to get in touch with me. And so, I mean, some people do that. They call you a lot, and he, he, when he couldn't reach me, he called me over and over again. Do you remember kind of scolding him about that? No. Okay. Do you remember uh, telling him, uh, Mike, uh, you know, you don't need to call me over and over again. Just leave one message. Do you remember that? Yeah, I wouldn't consider that scolding. It was done in a, a pleasant way. Just, you know, hey, if you need to reach me, just leave one message. I promise as soon as I'm available, I'm not always available right away. I may be on the air or something. I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as, you know, I, I'm, I'm able to. Okay. Because that, that's irritating to get, like, ten voicemails from one person within a short amount of time, right? I don't know if it's irritating. It's, I mean, I'm not okay. getting them, so it's, uh, I'm not privy to when they're coming in. You, you notice them, and you think maybe there's something really wrong, right, when someone is calling you over and over again. Okay. So that's what you thought. You thought maybe something was wrong. And, but it didn't bother you. Fair? Is that what you're... Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, um... You said that there was this phone conversation that you had with Mr. Montana in which um, you heard some, some loud speaking. Um, do you remember that testimony? Mm -hmm. And you had indicated that um, you weren't sure whether Mr. Montana was talking to you or talking to someone else on the phone. Yeah, we were on the phone one uh, afternoon, I think. I was at my house, and I you know he was talking loudly. And um, I don't know if I was distracted or he was, and I remember thinking, I'm not sure if he's speaking to me right now. He's speaking kind of loud, and I said, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Are you speaking to me right now? And, and, and that's when he responded. Okay, so what, um, what particularly was confusing? Was it, do you remember if it was just the, the loudness, or was it the content of what he was saying didn't seem to fit with you, meaning a conversation with you? I, I don't remember specifically. I just wanted a clarification. Okay. And said, you, I'm sorry, are you, are you talking to me right now? I'm sure, I'm sure that's happened to other people. Okay. Uh, then whenever that happened, 
and you asked the question, uh, you had indicated that Mr. Montana responded back to you that yes, he was talking to you, and um, he said uh, some name or whatever the hell your name is. Yes. Okay. And so, um, it, it, at that point, you understood that whatever loudness or whatever conversation was going on was was directed towards you. Uh, apparently, he said he was talking to me. Okay. Um, did you, uh, at any point in time, did you see Mr. Montana um, with a Bluetooth device? Like one of these little microphones? I, I know what you mean. I, I don't think so. Okay. Um, whenever he was doing work or you were interacting with him, do you remember him um, talking out loud? And you, Not to you? I don't think so. Okay. So know. you never saw him talking to himself. That's what I was going to be asking. Yeah. Because to you, you may not have realized. Yeah, I don't recall that. You also mentioned um, today that at some point you weren't sure if you had left Mr. Montana a message or you had texted him. Um, did you ever text Mr. Montana before? I don't think so. Okay. So when you were referring to that this morning, just a mistake. Yeah, I, I assume it was always by, by phone conversation. So I, I was basically saying that I communicated with him somehow. It's been a long time since I communicated with him in any way, so I don't really recall, but I think it was mostly phone. Okay. I just wanted to ask you if there was text messages going back and forth between you guys. I don't recall. Do you normally text? Do you regular text her? Yeah, probably less than most. Okay. And um, now that we're talking about it, do you remember ever texting him, Mr. or receiving a text from Mr. Montana? I don't recall. Okay. I next want to talk to you about um, February 3rd. I think you you indicated that this was the day that you had um, awoken to a, large, a loud banging on the door. Yes. Okay. Um, this was a unusual occurrence and generally for you. Is that fair to say? Not too many people coming to bang on your door. Correct. Okay. And, and also a, uh, a unique experience with Mr. Montana. Mr. Montana had arrived at your house and banging on the door before, right? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, whenever that happened, um, did you said you had to put some clothes on and come outside. Um, about how long do you think that took you? A few minutes, probably. I think I looked out my windows first to see what was going on. I grabbed some clothes and run downstairs. How long do you think the banging was for? Uh, it was abrupt, uh, 10, 10, 12 seconds or something like that. Very loud, very fast banging. Okay. So by the time you came down to the front door and checked it all out, no one there? I, I didn't see anyone, no. You didn't see Mr. Montana's band or I didn't. anything like that? No. Okay. Um, but the letter was, was there on your doorstep? Yeah. Yes. Now, in that letter, you described it um, if this morning on your direct examination. You described it as, as very threatening, and you felt very threatened by it. Remember? Yes. That? Okay. Um, when I asked you a little earlier, um, you added to that saying that, you know, threatened legal action. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes? Yes. Okay. Um, and so that's what you were referring to when you were talking about that letter. You were saying that you felt that he was threatening you with legal action. I felt, when I said earlier that I felt threatened uh, by the way it was, I thought it was a, a message being sent to me, so I felt threatened by the action and felt threatened it was written about the legal action, so both. Okay. And so the content specifically of the letter itself was asking you to, to pay him the balance of what you guys had agreed to, right? $2,200. Yes. And to send it to him. Yes. yes. And uh, and he left his address and his name. Yes. And uh, he was, it left some sort of thank you or something at the end, right? Thanks, Mike. Or I don't recall the ending. I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. Um, uh, it, it didn't, it wasn't some sort of harsh words or something that was mean at the end of the letter, right? Again, I, I don't have the letter in front of me. I don't remember how it was signed off on. Okay. Let me can you have one moment. Sure.
Okay. We can move on while we try to look for it and come back. Okay. That's okay. Sure. All right. Now, in this letter, um, Mr. Montana had indicated to you, uh, you know, please don't lie to me anymore. Yes? Yes. And Ms. Zip asked you about that. Yes. You said you didn't, you didn't know what that meant. Correct. Okay. Do you remember at any point in time um, prior to getting this letter when Mr. Montana was calling you and talking to you, I guess, after he's leaving messages, um, do you remember at any point in time uh, telling him um, that you would that you would pay him some money? That you would... No, I don't. Ever. I, the only thing I remember like that was when he asked me for receipts, um, or I asked him for receipts, and I said we would discuss it if you provided me receipts. So the receipts that you, you wanted, you wanted Mr. Montana to prove that the $800 that you gave him was for materials for your house. Is that what you wanted? I wanted to see that he had spent money on supplies, as, as he had stated. So what if Mr. Montana just used that money for his food and his rent and his gas? Would that not have been sufficient for you to, to know that you know, he needed more money to buy supplies? It, the, the money was specifically stated it was being purchased for supplies. My question is, why would it matter to you where he used the $800? Because that was the conditions of the contract. Okay, so you thought specifically this particular $800, this should only be used for supplies, um, and I need that to be substantiated before I give you any more money. Again, it was just the, the way the contract was, and that's what the terms we agreed to, and, and, and that's what I asked for. So it would be unreasonable to you, or it was unreasonable to you, to have a laborer um, use the money that they get paid up front for their living expenses. You mean generally by laborer? Sure. Yeah. I, considered Mr. I consider Mr. Montana a, a contractor with a business, okay. and I, when I hired him, I didn't think that he needed $800 for food and rent. Okay. Well, you later came to come to that opinion, right, that perhaps he uh, was down on his luck and, and needed more money, right? I, I, I was, may have speculated. I wasn't sure exactly what he needed the money for. Well, you remember talking to Ms. Scott and Ms. Zip about that, right? At some point, you came to realize that, you know... Well, he said specifically to me, he said, I'm broke. Right. right. And also, you interpreted that and you explained that, um, you know, perhaps he, he really did need the money and etc., right? I, I wasn't sure if, if he did or didn't. I, didn't. I didn't know his personal lifestyle, but... Um, it, it seemed that uh, if more money was given at that at that time, it, it, it wouldn't have him get any more work done. You understand what I'm saying? Not really. I'm sorry. The work wasn't being done, and it was being done less and less at that point. So I wasn't sure what more money was going to do to get more work done at that point. Would you consider yourself a perfectionist? I'm not a perfectionist. No, nothing's perfect. <laughs> no one's perfect. Do you strive for perfection? That's what I mean by perfectionism. I, I strive to do a good job and as best I can. Okay. In, in, in everything that you do, right? I, I know about everything, but some things I may not be good at. Well, you're trying to do the best you can at everything. That's my question. I guess if I go bowling, I'm not trying to roll a 300 score, but I try to do well, I guess. Right. You want, still want to do the best you can at bowling, sure. right? You want sure. to be the best sportscaster you can. Yes? Yes. You want to be the best businessman you can. Yes. And this is something we touched upon very uh, early on in my examination. Uh, would you consider yourself to be a good businessman? I think so. A savvy businessman? I hope so. Okay. You can tell when there's a good opportunity or a good deal? Yes? I think so. And thus far in your life, you'd say that you've been pretty successful at it? I think so. Okay. On the contrary, do um, you feel that Mr. Montana may be not such a good businessman? Objection relevance. Uh, it's actually foundational for this impeachment. But for now, I'll let you go forward with it. Mm -hmm. Would you agree that Mr. Montana may be not the best businessman? I, I don't know his whole business. I saw a, a very s small sliver of, of what he did. I don't know if he just was not into the job he was doing on that particular day. Just because someone does a poor job on one day doesn't mean they're a poor businessman. Okay, do you remember talking to Ms. Scott and Ms. Zip about... Uh, feeling that uh, Mr. Montana 
um, and explaining to them that you had a conversation with Mr. Montana, that perhaps in the future uh, he should ask for more money up front and that maybe he wouldn't run into this problem and that giving him some advice on being a better businessman, do you remember talking to them about that? I was trying to be friendly. I was trying to be, be friendly and it was, you know, the end of our relationship seemed and uh, I was just trying to be friendly and say, hey, we'll both, you know, be better for this in the future. Sure. And so in your mind, you were offering some friendly advice, right? As I would ask us to give me friendly advice at any time to think I could be a better person or a better businessman. Okay. And this was after you believed you terminated the relationship or the, or the business relationship was terminated, correct? Um, after, after he quit, yes. Right. After you perceived he quit? After he told me he quit. Okay. Um, and so if you had this advice from Mr. Montana uh, about becoming a better businessman and understanding those parameters, why not at that point say, okay, you know what, Mike, because this would be a better scenario, why don't I pay you up half of it up front? That should cover the supplies and, and your necessities, and we can get this thing done. Why not suggest that instead of just in the future, hey, we're done here, I'm not going to pay you anymore, and in the future you should ask for more money up front. Well, first of all, I didn't say I'm not paying you anymore. <laughs> okay, he quit. Um, but um, it, if if work had been getting done, and, and in numerous times, as I've explained before, he said, I'm going to work real hard now and I'm going to get this done. And then he wouldn't show up the next day or the day after that. And if he would have just shown up each and every day and actually put in an effort, maybe several days in a row, just to show an effort, that would have changed the relationship. It would have been different. And he, he just didn't. Didn't show an effort. So what was more money going to do with that? If you're driving a lemon of a car, are you going to throw more money at it? Or, I mean, what do you do? So to you, you, you perceived Mr. Montana just not putting in enough effort? He wasn't showing up to work often. Um, did you know or discuss with Mr. Montana that um, he had several very serious back injuries and several surgeries on his back? No. And that he was uh, in a significant amount of pain and distress because of those injuries? Objection that. assumes facts not in evidence. Motion to strike. Approved. Um, medical records. Well, are you telling me you are going to present any evidence? Yes. We'll have evidence on this. Do you repeat the question? Um, I think you answered it, but my, my un overlying question, I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly what I said, was um, that you, you didn't know or you didn't have uh, conversations with Mr. Montana about uh, his severe back injuries and the surgeries that he had on it. I'd be surprised to he hear that just because he was a painter for a living and climbing up ladders. Yeah, there's a lot of physical work involved in that, right? Climbing the ladder, I assume, yeah. Well, you know, you ended up having to do so much work, you said. It, it's physical, having to climb yeah. up on the ladders. and Sure. I don't consider painting a, a greatly physical act, but there is some physicality involved, sure. Sure, lifting the, the equipment and paint and well, all of those I things. I know, but lifting equipment, brushes and, and rollers and things aren't very heavy. Maybe lifting a ladder, carrying a ladder. Right. You think maybe... Uh, exacerbated if one has an injury, right? I'm not a doctor. I, I don't know. Well, for you, as you've indicated to us that you've had some injuries and that it's difficult necessarily for you to be able to do all the things that you've done before because of those injuries, right? Objection 352 and calls for speculation. Sustained. Okay. Uh, Mr. Montana, you had indicated that you... You called me I'm Mr. Sorry. Montana. I'm sorry. Mr. Kraska, um, you've had some injuries, correct? What injuries were you referring okay. to? Prior to this case, you had some sort of knee injury, right? No? Shoulder, something? No? I'm not remembering that. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I thought you had some sort of knee or, or shoulder injury. Okay. I'm not sure um, why you would think that. I'm sorry. I thought you would explain that at some point in time. Okay. Um, I'll say that you've had suffered injuries as a result of this case and why we're here. Yes. You described those things. Absolutely. Right. And you also described that um, because of those, it's it's difficult for you to do all the athletic things as, as best as you would, something to that effect. I don't think I said that, no. Okay. Is it not? Is it is it not more difficult because of your injuries to 
physically do some things? I don't let it affect me. I, I won't let it affect me. Could you see how other people's injuries may affect them and their physicality? Is that Objection. reasonable or unreasonable to you? Relevance. Sustain. So I'll move on. Um, Mr. Kreska, you had um, indicated that Mr. Montana mentioned his sister um, a lot. Is that right? I would say a lot from time to time. Okay. Enough that it, it stuck with you as, as odd. Is that fair to say? I don't know if it was odd. I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure I would say odd, but I... I different. <clears throat> okay. Do you remember talking to Ms. Zip and Ms. Scott about how um, you thought that a grown man that uh, talks about his sister so much, that was, that was something that was at least um, stuck in your mind enough to mention to law enforcement? I, I honestly don't remember talking about that, but okay. Okay. Well, what about now? You feel the, all the mentioning of his sister uh, as a grown man. I think he, that's the term you, you use. It's, it's a grown, grown man mm -hmm. talking about his sister so often. You think that that's odd? Objection relevance. Overall. Um, I know when he, if he wouldn't show up and he would tell me that his sister told him he should. I thought that seemed a little strange, but then at, at times I also thought, well, could she be the manager of the company? Maybe she's you know, acting as a, in a superior role, I, I don't, I'm not really sure. Okay. I think I understand. You, you were indicating that it was, a, it was a little at least unusual for a grown man to explain to you that he's taking direction from his sister. Yes. Okay, because you would think that a grown man is independent enough and doesn't need to be taken care of or... Hmm. Well, again, right? in lieu of the situation that I just gave. Correct. Sure. Right. Yes. yes. Now, um, you had indicated just after your testimony about this, um, Mr. Um, Montana mentioning his sister, that there was another voicemail that you told the district attorney about that was a threatening phone call. Do you remember that? When did I say that? That was this morning. This morning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, you remember, what well, you didn't testify about that previously in this mm -hmm. case, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you didn't tell the police when you talked to them, right, about this other extra threatening phone call? I don't remember talking. What are you referring to when you say talk to the police? Uh, I can just couple as law enforcement. We can just say Ms. Scott and um, mm -hmm. Ms. Zip. Mm -hmm. You didn't mention that other extra I, I'm not phone sure phone. if I did or not, no. Um, Mr. Kreska, um, you were prepared uh, before today, right, to testify. Is that fair to say? I was prepared? Yes. Did I come here prepared? Yes. By someone else or just by myself? By the district attorney's office. Um, we had conversation. Right, multiple conversations. Over the last several months, yes. Right. And people from the district attorney's office gave you some advice on how to testify. Is that true or no? I don't think so. Didn't you receive some sort of form or anything from the district attorney's office about not um, guessing at numbers and da 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 da? No, I don't recall that. No. Did anybody from the district attorney's office give you any advice as to how you should testify here today? I don't think so. So it's your testimony that you got. You didn't discuss taking pauses or anything like that. Pauses. Um. I don't recall that. Did you meet with anybody else from the district attorney's office besides Mrs. Zip and Ms. Scott? I, I don't think so. Okay. Next thing I want to talk to you about is, um, is your vehicle. Okay. Um, you had indicated that... Um, the vehicle that was involved with this case was a uh, was a Mercedes. Yes, sir. Okay, it was a 500 SL. Yes, sir. 2008. 2008? No, 2003. 2003. Yes. Beautiful car. Used to be. Okay. Um, you took great pride in that car. Is that fair to say? 
I enjoyed it. Okay. In the same way, um, you take care of your house and your belongings. You made sure that that car was washed, right? On occasion. On occasion. Yes, sir. Okay. Detailed. Not not often detailed. Okay. Did you do those things yourself too? You? Sometimes. Okay. So that's something you took the time to do. Sometimes. Right? And you had a, a, another vehicle that was um, that was parked in your garage, uh, at least in February. Is that right? Yes, sir. And that was a Hummer. Yes, sir. Okay. Also a nice car. It's okay. Okay. Um, also, make sure you take care of it, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when Mike was uh, working for you, um, you routinely drove the Mercedes. Is that right? I drove both. Okay. Um, did you have one that was a primary driver or not really? No. Okay, so you'd alternate? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did you express to um, Mr. Uh, Montana any sort of feelings about your vehicle, at least about your Mercedes? No. Not about what a nice car it was or that you liked it? No. I want to talk to you now more about substantively why we're all here, okay? About what? I want to talk to you more substantively about why we're here in this case, okay. all right? Um, and I want to talk to you about the events of um, February 10th, okay? okay. Um, on that date, you had indicated that you had gone to the gym earlier in the day. Yes. And that's your normal practice? Yes, sir. Okay. Working out? Yes. Okay. Um, saw one of your buddies there? I did. Okay. Your neighbor? Yes. Okay. Also a police officer? Yes. Okay. Technically not a neighbor. He lives in, in the neighborhood, but not a neighbor of mine. Okay. He lives in your neighborhood? I, I generally refer to a neighbor as someone that lives maybe next door or in a cul-de-sac. He lives... In the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. Okay. Nevertheless, buddy yours lives close by? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and when you... After you went home, you cleaned up, presumably. You said you had a photo shoot or yes, cam sir. camera shoot? Sure. Something like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes? Yes. Okay. Um, and um, when you were you're leaving your, your house, okay, you were reversing out of your driveway. Yes. Okay, and it was around 3 o'clock. Yes? Yes. And that's your normal time where you go to work every day? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, as you were reversing out of the, uh, the car, uh, out of the um, driveway, excuse me, um, did you see anything in your rear view? I saw Mr. Montana's van. Immediately as you were pulling out of your driveway? or was it No, it's after I heard the screeching tires. And, uh, okay, so you believe that you've probably already gone down the length of your driveway? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I want to ask you, particularly about this point in time, okay? Did you at all look to your neighbor that would have been on uh, the passenger side of your vehicle? Did you look over there and... Across, you know, to your neighbor's house in their driveway or anything like that? I don't recall. Okay. Do you remember seeing any other vehicles in the area? No, I don't. But again, you weren't necessarily looking either for other vehicles, right? No. Okay, so when you're reversing out your driveway, your attention is usually just in your rear view? And yes, sir. Get out of there and go to work? Yes. Okay, and so when you heard this, these screeching tires... Um, you had already, like I said, completed the length of your driveway, meaning reversing. Yes? Uh, I, I, close to completing it, yes. Okay. And you said um, today that you had applied your brakes. Yes? yes. Okay, did you put your car in park? I really don't know. Okay. The next thing you... Presumably. Do, okay. And if you don't know, it's okay. I'm just asking to the best you recall. I don't remember physically moving the lever into the park position. For all my questions, it's only to the best you recall. Okay. Um, now, when, the, when you described, and you, there was some illustration um, that was shown to you, you described that Mr. Montana uh, rapidly approached your window. Yes? Correct. Okay. And you also said that um, he immediately was making some sort of motion, as you indicated, to put the window down. Yes. It on your um, direct examination that Mr. Montana said you should have paid me my $2,200. You remember that really distinctively. Is that right? Do I remember what distinctively? Those words, the particular words distinctively, or are you just kind of describing what you remember, not necessarily a quote? It was very, very close to that. Okay. Uh, to, you should have paid me my $2,200. Okay. 
So not necessarily a quote, but just that's what you believe. It was really close to that. Okay. Um, you don't recall Mr. Montana saying, please pay me my, or whether there's a please or not, or you need to pay me my $2,200. No. But you do remember him saying pay and $2,200 for sure, right? He said you should have paid me, past tense, you should have paid me my $2,200. Um, now, just after whatever conversation, whatever words transpired between you guys, right? Um, did you see where Mr. Montana went right after that? Yes, I described that he went just to the front of me. Okay, so you don't recall Mr. Montana continuing to talk to you at the window and then going back into his van? No. At all? No. Again, was your focus at that point in time to watch where he was going or no? I was fully trying to focus on him at this point because I didn't know what he was going to do. Okay. Do you remember talking to law enforcement um, the first time you talked to the police after this whole thing happened? Do you remember that? I don't know when you're referring to. So the very first time you spoke to law enforcement? After this incident, after you got out of the hospital? The first time I was talking to S Scott Bartolome when I was lying in the street, he's law enforcement, so I was talking to him. Okay, I meant as an, an, some investigator from the police. Do you remember talking to them and giving a statement? Uh, we're referring to someone other than we're here today? You know, it's, I'll, we're drawing a question. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to ask you, do you remember telling police that Mr. Montana was taking pictures taking lots of pictures of you. Do you remember that? I don't remember saying lots. I uh, I think you're referring to when I was in an ambulance? No. Okay. I'm not, but if you remember then, it, it, for my purpose of my question, it doesn't matter. I, I don't remember this conversation we're having, but I okay. remember saying this morning that it looked like he had reached over the windshield and snapped something, which uh, my recollection tells me it was some sort of a camera because it flashed into the... Uh, into the windshield. Do you remember at the preliminary hearing when we discussed this, you didn't mention anything about this flash or anything? Do you, do you remember it wasn't until I asked you about your statements about taking pictures? I do. Okay. Yes. So this testimony that you had today about seeing this flash, that's new. Is that right? No. It's not new? No. Okay. So is it your understanding or your memory now that you only saw flashes when Mr. Montana was in the front of your vehicle. I'm not sure what your question is. Okay. I, I'm trying to ask you whether you thought now that Mr. Montana was taking photos of you. I, I don't know if he was taking a photo. I saw a flash. Okay. And that was only when he was in the front of your, your car? Yes. It's the only time I saw a flash. Now, you said, um, as on your direct and when I was asking you, after Mr. Montana, as you perceived, was by your um, driver's side window, that he began to walk past you, right? Past the driver's side door? To take the, with the flash, he, he, he basically walked to the front of that door and leaned over the, the, uh, the windshield. Okay. So what I'm, I'm talking about is that time in between the conversation and that point that you're describing. You had indicated, and there was some sort of illustration, and that was described Mr. Montana walking past your driver's side window. Yes. I, first of all, he said it was a conversation. There was no conversation. He said something to me. I didn't respond. And then he reached over. I mean, we're talking, the car's a short car. We're talking a step, maybe, or two, to lean over to the uh, windshield and to do that flash. Well, this is a full-size 500, right? It's a 500 SL. It's a two-seater. Right. The, so there's, the only, there's only one door. Right. Yeah. There's two doors, right? There's one on each I'm side. I'm sorry, one on each side. But okay. Yes, but, but to, get from, to get from where the passenger would be sitting to get to, say, the side view mirror, that's a stride. Right. Well, my point was that this wasn't one of these tiny Mercedes. It's one of these little... It's still negligible. It's a very small car. Okay. Um, in any case, my, my point was, and what I was asking you is that, um, as you described it, you walked past your driver's side window after what I said was a conversation, whatever words that were exchanged, okay? It was all in one motion. 
he, he, he said his words and continued to step forward and then stepped back. It was very, very quick. So at that point in time, um, Mr. Montana didn't, did you, did you see uh, a gun or anything like that? Not until he uh, got to the rear wheel of the car. Okay. So Mr. Montana, he didn't point this gun at you through the driver's side window? I, I, I don't know if he did or not. He was coming at me from behind. So he could have been pointing it at some point. I saw in the rear view mirror his face. So where he was pointing the gun at that point or where it was at the point, I don't know. Well, I'm talking about while you're in the driver's side and you're looking out the window, mm -hmm. right? And this is when you're describing that he walked past you. I didn't see him pointed at me at that point. Right. It, yes, he didn't put, point it at you while you're you know, directly at the window, right? I didn't see him do that, no. Right. And um, you said that, did you keep your window up or did you roll it up? I don't know. Okay. And this is a convertible, right? It is. But the top was up, as you remember it. Yes, sir. Meaning the hard top was yes, sir. deployed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then when Mr. Montana was in the front of your vehicle, um, he didn't shoot or, as you perceived, didn't point the gun directly at you through the windshield. Yes, right? he did. Well, I thought you described that he had pointed and he had it oddly positioned and it was pointing down. You had made some specific descriptions about he that. He did, and he shot it three times and then continued moving and pointed it straight at me. Okay, so when I'm asking him, we're, we're getting there, okay? Um, I'm asking you that the point in time when you described that he was pointing the, uh, pointing the gun down, as you perceived it, okay? Um, we didn't, there was no um, shooting through the windshield at you, right? Uh, the next motion after he shot it through the, the hood of the car was pointing it straight at me. And okay. that's when, as I described, I realized I was shot sh shortly after that. Okay. I'm sorry. You you thought you were shot. This is, now we're going in time here, right? You said Mr. Montana made some words to you, walked to the front of your vehicle, right? Yes. And at that point in time, he shot, as you've described, yes. into the hood. Yes, sir. Okay and then pointed the gun at you. Yes, sir. You believed at that point in time you were shot already? No, I, I, I didn't mean it that way. I'm sorry. Okay. If okay. that's the impression I gave, no. Okay. It, I'm saying he didn't point the gun directly at me until he had made those previous moves. Okay. So, we're, and I'm, I'm sorry, we're going to, I'm just taking it one step at a time. Okay? I understand. Um, so at the point in time when uh, he's in front of you, uh, as you perceived, in front of your hood, um, you said he pointed the gun at you directly. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Um, didn't fire. I don't believe so. Okay. There were no shots that came through your windshield. I, I don't know. I don't, th I don't think so. Okay. You've seen the pictures of your vehicle? I've seen pictures as I'm being shown here today. Okay. But it, they're not conclusive. I haven't seen the entire vehicle. I haven't seen every angle of the vehicle. I haven't seen the vehicle in person. So I don't know the da overall damage to the vehicle. And not to mention this was uh, a pretty heated and traumatic situation that you went through, right? Obviously. Okay. And so it wasn't necessarily that you're concentrated on remembering necessarily each of these things that I'm asking you. Right? I remember a lot of them, sir. Okay. I've thought about them a lot over the last couple of years. Okay. And I appreciate it. What I'm saying is, um, again, only to the best you recall, if you don't remember or not, that's fine too. Okay. All right. So um, after Mr. Mo Montana, as you perceived and described, um, pointed the gun at you through the windshield uh, and didn't fire, you perceived him to continue to walk around. And this is kind of a clockwork motion, as maybe if you're looking down at this vehicle, right? So towards yes, now the uh, passenger front fender. Yes, sir. Right, walking past that. Yes, sir. Okay. Walking through to where the passenger side um, window is. Yes, sir. All right. Um, and uh, Mr. Montana um, is, as you perceived, um, still shooting um, and striking your vehicle. Is that right? As I perceived, that's exactly. He was, he was firing the, the gun uh, through the windows of my car. Okay. And again, we're just, we're just at the passenger side now, okay? Yes, sir. Um, and so as you perceived it, your uh, vehicle was continuously struck. And as you, I think, described it this morning, it seemed to be a continuous bang, bang, bang. Yes, sir. Okay. And then um, Mr. Montana, as you perceived, continued to walk, right, through the, to the rear. Uh, it would be the passenger side uh, rear 
vendor yes, sir. area, and uh, and you at this point in time are all curled up in your driver's side, right? Outside, outside of the car. Okay. Yes, as Mr. As, On you the mis- ground. as you described, after Mr. Montana walked past the passenger side window, you said you bailed. That was when you described you bailed out and by the, um, I guess the in between your door and the vehicle on the ground. Yes, sir. Okay. And as you described um, very clearly, you were trying to consciously put as much, um, I guess, obstacles between you and you perceived Mr. Montana. <coughs> Where you perceived Mr. Montana was. I was trying not to get shot. Right. And so your, your thought is to kind of block any sort of um, angle towards you, right? Yes, it was, it was fast. It was chaotic. Okay. And um, and then after um, you described Mr. Montana at the rear of your vehicle, uh, you said you sensed, and you described how you sensed with like sound and um, your peripheral vision that um, Mr. Montana continued to walk past the rear of your vehicle. Yes. He was at the rear of my vehicle. Yes. Okay. And at that point in time is when, is it, is it, is it at that point in time that you got back into your vehicle? Uh, around that time, when you got back to the back driver's side corner of the vehicle. Okay. And again, that in your mind is, as you were saying, try not to get shot. I was doing anything I could. Okay. And um, and the shots continued. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, but. As you've described it, because it was so chaotic and all of these things, um, you cannot certainly say at what point in time you were shot. Is that right? I, I don't know. Okay. And likewise, you cannot say with some certainty whether you were inside the vehicle or outside the vehicle when you got shot. I'm not sure. As I testified earlier, yes. there were points where my body was literally raising up and hit my head hitting the roof of the car when I was sitting in it. So I don't know if bullets were going through me and forcing that reaction or if it was if it was just the fear of, of the loud sound of the bullet and the glass breaking. So did I, did I feel the hole in which the bullet went through at the time? No. But I, I, I knew I was being hit. And so my, my only question was just what you answered, okay? Um, then uh, you said that while you were in the vehicle, and I believe as you were describing, um, curled up, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and you, I think you described it's not the usual way one would sit in the yes. car. Um, you, at some point, sensed, I think you said, that, that, the, that Mr. Montana left? Right? At some point, I realized he was fleeing. Okay, so while you were in the vehicle, I think you said you continued to hear shots, right? Yes. And then at some point, they stopped. Yes. Jack Morris, probably you time to finish. If there's any other questions. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. That's fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I would, I have a, a hearing in an unrelated case tomorrow morning at 30. I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but I do have some confidence. I assume the start on time will be done by 9.30. So I'm going to have you reconvene outside the court at 9.30 instead of 9 tomorrow. I'll just remind you that my admonishment continues to apply. Please leave your notepad behind and have a good night.